Hi everyone, welcome back into another video. This week we're talking about the M's and the numbers that we carry on the bikes, what they mean, where they come from, and a little bit about the history. Let's go straight in. So following on from uh, questions we've had in the past, when, and they often come up about the M's and the numbers and, and what they mean, how they're allocated and things like that. And it's been in one of the Q and A's previously, I think last year, and it was something that was just answered in two minutes. And then what tends to happen with these kind of questions is it, it opens it up for more questions. And that's great, that's fine, people want to know more about it. So instead of answering five or six questions in 10 minutes and just giving you a, a one or two minute answer, I'm going to take a bit more time to address that one question. And this whole video is just going to be about the M's, the numbers, and the way the bikes stick it up, why they're done the way they are, a little bit about the history of them, and why they are this way. So starting off, as we have them now, and you'll have seen, seen them out on track over TT this year, and the previous, I want to say at least the previous maybe 20 years I think now, we've had them with M's on the front, numbers on the back. So where you've got your normal registration plate, your number plate on your bike, We'll cover that in a yellow vinyl and we'll put our number on it. And the numbers are allocated one down to eight at the moment. Um, when I started it was seven and it remains seven. Um, apart from the odd year where we had eight and went back to seven and back to eight. So it's, it's between those two numbers. And those numbers are allocated based around the order in which you've come in to the job. Uh, the exception to that is number one is always the Chief Travel Marshal and Chief Travel Marshal isn't necessarily the longest serving one and that's the case right now. So we've got Tony Duncan's our number one, he's our Chief Travel Marshal and Tony is the second longest serving now but Jim who's number two has been in it for 32 years now, I think it's 32? 32 years. So no matter if someone had been in for three years and they somehow became Chief Travel Marshal they go straight to number one and then two down to the end allocated on how long you've been in and so if somebody above you retires you get moved up and that's how it works there are some very slight differences to that uh, Johnny Hegg who's our number seven there's actually two TMs have come in since Johnny so Johnny technically should be number six and the newer guy should be seven and eight but Johnny doesn't like even numbers so he's sticking to seven um, whether he'll take five if he gets the chance I'm not too sure but he likes seven, he's sticking with seven. And it's actually a little bit easier sometimes that way because Johnny's been seven since he started and he is number seven to all of us. Dead quick now, you just associate a number with a person like instantly and you form that connection quite quickly. And then if it changes, it can just take you a little while to get used to it. So I've been in the job now for eight years. And when I came in, there was two new TMs and there was only seven at the time. So I went straight in at six. And the other new TM at the time, Brian, he was seven. And then, I'm trying to think how exactly how it all worked out, but a few of them have retired since. And so I've gone in, gone into number five now. Interestingly enough, Oatsy, Stephen Oates, who was a travel marshal back when I was a newcomer. So that's 2011. So, so before that, he was a travel marshal. And I forget what number he was back then. But when I became travel marshal in 2016, Ochi then came back out of retirement and he went, he went to the back of the list. So he went, he went in behind me at six. Even though he had loads and loads of experience, he went, he went to the back of the queue again because he sort of started again. So that, that's kind of another interesting one about the way the, the numbers were allocated. Like just because you may have done it for five years, ten years ago, if you come in, you don't then go in at number three, you go back to the bottom of the list. So that's quite interesting the way that works. But yeah, for as long as I've been doing it, it's M's on the front, numbers on the back. I made the, <laughs> the, the, the races error, if you like, when I got my first bike in 2016 and Tony gave me all my stickers and my numbers to put on the bike. And the most natural thing in the world that you do when you race is you put your number on the front. So <laughs> I put my yellow background on, got my big number six as it was at the time, and I put it on the front of the bike. Made sure I got it all nice and square and central. I stood back and thought, ah, oh, that looks really nice. I said, there's something that doesn't quite fit with this. It doesn't, there's something that looks wrong. And it dawned on me that I, I should have put an M on the front and the number on the back. 
Uh, so I quickly changed that around. But not going back too long ago, so I'll play you a picture up here from down at the Southern, and you can see they've got M's on the back. So as long as travel marshals have been involved, they've always had an M on the front because you look at bikes coming at you, don't you? All the time, whether that's races or whoever, whichever bike it is, you see them coming at you, and your initial read of the bike is what's on the front. So you knew it was a marshal straight away. So you've always had M's on the front, and then they just have used to have M's on the back too. And I think it's just become a case of identification, basically. So we'll have a number on the back. So you can't tell who's who, can you? When, when you see a traffic marshal come past, you can't tell which one of us it is. Okay, you might be able to narrow it down from size, uh, although we're all pretty big now, to be fair. But in the old days, like before I did it, Chris Farger, who was a traffic marshal, Chris is, is only small, and so you can tell he wasn't Steve Granger or Johnny Hare, who were really, really big. And so there's some small differences, but flashing by, you can't tell who it is. And then on top of that now, we have the little numbers on the front, and they aren't uh, required for us to go, to go out and do the job. It's something that we like to have on them. So it's, it's really, really, for pictures, so if, if anyone gets a picture of us, it's really quick to identify which one of us it is. And just at a glance from a, from a front-on photo, you don't have to try and work out who it is from trying to see their eyes through the visor or we sometimes we wear different colored knee sliders and things like that so you can sometimes tell us apart and if I see a picture I know who it is you can just sort of tell from riding style eventually but at a glance you can quickly tell who it is from the little number on the front that moves on then to the numbers on the back and so obviously we don't run a registration number on the back of the bikes for the whole of TT and Grand Prix and Southern 100 as well we just run numbers one to eight and we're allowed to run those on open roads so we don't change the plates over when the road's closed and then put them back to road plates when the road's open. We're allowed to run them as they are, one to eight. And we have a dispensation there with the government, the police, any of the relevant authorities that we need to, that we can run those numbers and we're still legal and roadworthy and doing everything that we need to to, to be on the road legally. Um, there has been the odd case where you might have had a police officer from the UK who stopped one of us and said, who the hell do you think you are riding around with a single number on the back? But I think the last time that happened, it actually happened to our uh, to Mike Four, Steve Granger, who's in the police force. So he uh, he put them straight pretty quickly and just said, you know, and obviously once they know and it's explained, they understand, but you can imagine if they haven't been told, if you come over to to do some police work as a UK officer, and all of a sudden you see a bike riding around on open roads with number three on the back, Good chance you might pull them over and try and find out what they're up to but yeah we have a dispensation for it and we're allowed to run that um i couldn't go out now and, and do it like if we need to use the bikes like, like we've seen we've used them for funerals and if you saw the last one we did which was maybe a month or so after tt then we had all the uk plates which are for these bikes the the actual registration numbers for them because we don't have that dispensation to just run it all year there's just there's the, there's the slot of TT and Grand Prix and a few days either side of the start and the finish where we're allowed to run them with the single numbers on. But, and I said this in a video last year, there's no advantage to, to having it. It's not, it's, if anything, if you, people, I mean, you talk about I'm trying to get caught, we're not going to get caught doing anything, but um, there's no hiding place with a single number, is there? It's not going to get confused about having to remember a seven digit long registration number. It's just like, yeah, it was number two. So there's, it's, obviously there's no advantage to having it other than it just looks a little bit different and uh, people love to ask that question about the numbers, how are we allowed to ride around with those. So that's, uh, that's the reason we get a dispensation from the government for that one. Uh, someone asked, do we ever run our individual numbers on our jackets? And again, going back to something I've talked about before, we don't. We've all got a little number 14 on our jackets and people ask, why have you got number 14 when there's only eight travel marshals? And why have you all got the same number? And it's Dan Neen's number. So I've talked about this before, but anyone who hasn't seen it, uh, Dan Neen, who we lost in 2018 at TT, and his number was number 14. So we have his number, his little font as well, and that's been put in our pocket ever since then. Um, RST did it. The RST used to sponsor Dan and they're our sponsor, they, they provide us with all our protective gear, our riding gear. Yeah, so a little mark to Dan, we keep it, we carry it and it's it's on our coat and I think that's great, I love that. And um, I got another new jacket this year and the 14s are still on it, I'm happy to say, and 
long may that continue because uh, yeah, really missed Dan, he was great. So that's why we carry the number 14 on the jacket and we don't have any number to distinguish us on the jackets. Um, I mean, from a purely practical sense, we never take our jackets off so it's not like who's this who's. So going on from that, sometimes with our helmets, um, if we go for a drink after a coffee, after a practice session, obviously we'll sit at a table, take our helmets off and we'll put them on the table and it can be quite hard to remember which one's which. We do have different sizes, but quite a few of us have the same size helmet. So you can tell sometimes because I knew I took one tear off off or I didn't have any and someone else did. So you can kind of remember which one, but it's still very easy to get them mixed up. So some of the boys have a little sticker they'll have with a name and number and just put that on the back corner maybe of the helmet. Just something on the helmet to distinguish it from the others so you don't get them mixed up. And that's the only sort of personal number that we have on the on Oz helmets or anything like that. That's pretty much it. That pretty much wraps up anything to do with the, the numbers on the bikes and the, the uh, identification that we have on them for the marshals and the officials and, and anyone else out there to, to sort of see who we are. So this video has been a little bit different. I've gone and just talked about one thing for the entire video. So you guys let me know if you think that's better or would you prefer that I just spent two minutes talking about four different things and just being a bit more quick fire. Uh, the only reason we've kind of done it this way is, like I say, when we talk about a certain topic, it then asks, it leads on to more questions about that topic, which I'm more than happy to answer. I just thought we'll just do all of them that I've had about this topic in one video and just see if you think that's a better format. So this video is just all about that. And if you like it, watch it. And if you don't, skip it. And then the next one could be about something else. Or do you prefer the quick fire, more um, short answered kind of formats? That we have had in the past. Uh, so let us know what you think to that. I spoke to Jim last week, my two. He's typically not on the old man again. He's constantly on holiday, Jim. I swear the biggest period of time that Jim spends on the old man is when he's forced to be here for two weeks for TT. Apart from that, he's all over the place. But <laughs> I'm only messing. Jim's uh, more than <laughs> allowed and earned his right to, to retirement and to go and enjoy himself. It's great to see all the stuff he gets up to. I spoke to him last week and he is going to come in, we've pretty much nailed down a date, he's going to come in, we're going to sit down, we'll set this up a bit differently, we'll do a big Q&A and uh, you'll get way different answers from Jim. Um, it'll be interesting sometimes we'll have some questions we haven't asked before and we can both give our answer on it and they'll be completely different, not right or wrong, just completely different take or completely different experience of certain things and it'll be interesting to see that as well. Um, Plus, personally, I can just sit and listen to Jim, to Jim talk, and he's got some amazing stories, funny, and uh, just so much knowledge, like way more than I've got. So yeah, Jim will be on before Grand Prix, so keep looking out for that one. But apart from that, yeah, different format this week. Let me know what you think, and see you in the next one.